not much. Just trying to um, go on with life and try to apologize to anybody that I can that I was out of line. Not a professional. Problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Before we get into all of that, man, I want to say uh, I want to say thank you for uh, for reaching out and uh, coming on to share your side of the story. Uh, <clears throat> very, uh, very controversial out there today. James Sanders in the building. Before we get into all of that, man, before be, before we even get to that that place that that part right there um introduce yourself and and give us a little bit of background about yourself before you got in the trucking and how long you've been in it okay my name is james sanders um i'm a retired firefighter and a lot of I've lost so much in my life. Um, I've lost my entire family, uh, mother, father, brother, and sister. And I've been trucking for almost 40 plus years, give or take. Um, but then when I lose friends and then when I'm losing my wife, I've, uh, I try to help people. I'm not normally, I'm, I'm a gentle guy. I'm a good person is what people tell me. I, which I am. I, I believe so. I try to help people. I go out of my way to help people. And, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm a caring gentleman. I might not, it might not look at from the previous video, but we all have our bad moments, you know, type situation, but I'm 51 years old. I should know better. And I am shameful what I've done, but we'll, and we'll 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 get you know to, I can only we'll 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 get to that, uh, James, um, a retired okay. firefighter. Wow, I mean, yes, sir. A fire being a firefighter uh, takes a lot of endurance, a lot of a lot of strength. You know, I I see I I see firefighters like put their lives on the line for for strangers for many things i i you know i i i believe it or not i tried out for a firefighter and i man mm -mm, mm -mm, it's uh, it, it wasn't for me i mean you you have to you have to go through a strenuous endurance test and i mean the gear alone that you guys put on <laughs> imagine the gear that you got on weighing about 50, 60, 70 pounds, then you got to... It's you, 95 you got, pounds of gear. 95 pounds Nine. of gear. That's just the gear, the the oxygen tank, all that. Ooh. And then and then when you have to go in and say if you have to save somebody, that's about an extra 100, 100 plus pounds right there, man. How... How do you guys do it, man? How how do you guys do it? They what kicks in? You're doing a fire, okay? Unless you have a structure fire, you there's somebody inside. Your adrenaline inside your body kicks in. It's like some people don't have it, some people do. That okay? You see somebody in a burning house, or you know there's somebody in there. Your adrenaline kicks in like you go in super overdrive. And then you want, you don't want nobody to get hurt. So you're going to go in, you know, they've already, one of them, they, they, you know, heaven forbid, they aspired already, but, um, but there's a chance to save a life. That's what we do. Okay. We go in and we fight fires and we try to save people. And they, you know, I mean, they've already had a bad day. They can't get out. So you got somebody out and the adrenaline kicks in. To go in and burning house, you know, you got, you got the uh, search team, all right? They're going in without no protection. They're going in to search for people. Okay. You got that. Then you got the, the uh, called the pipe man, which those are the firefighters I have the hose sitting at the door 
or sitting outside and putting water on the fire. That's called the pipe man. Then you got the engineer, which is the truck driver, which pretty much I was. Um, so I've, I've done, I've done actually all three. I was the search and rescue team. I was also the pipe man. I was also engineer. So I've, I've done everything in the fire service has to offer. I've done it 25 years or so, wow. give or take, maybe a little bit longer Dang. without going into it. But it's not, it's a young man's game. I mean, I, yeah, I, I could probably still do it. There's guys in my, there's guys my age that are still do it, but I have fallen through roofs to the first floor, to the second floor and to the basement. All right. Or a call space. Um, because you don't know how long that fire has been burning. You go up to do, it's called a ventilation. You go up to cut a hole, you know, you poke, it feels solid. You step, boom, you go down, which I have gone down. I mean, I've, I've, I've gone through rehab, um, a lot of different, a lot of different issues. You know, only, not only are you fighting fires, you're dealing with accidents. You know, you, you have to deal with this kind of thing. Um, do you do you have to do you be, have to do you have to deal with mental health issues as well as being a firefighter? Because I'm sure some instances you you guys go in and you know unfortunately unfortunately you you come across you know the victims that didn't make it out. Yes, and I'm I'm sure yes. that I'm sure that works on your mental some kind of way. Yeah, it does. It will it will break a firefighter down. It will. Um, some firefighters handle it a lot differently. Um, other firefighters handle it a certain way. Um, there's different methods and different programs that firefighters do use and, and on their methods, and there's other programs firefighters actually go out there and use um, that situation. We have to deal with the mental mental part of it. Um, for, for a person that, that is going through that kind of thing. And you have to do deal with, you're like a, a, a savior, so to speak. You know, you got to go through a mental state. Um, and after the years, a firefighter will break down, which we all do it. We all have breakdowns. It doesn't matter if you're in the fire service, the police department, or EMS. As the fire community on the front lines, you will have some type of breakdown, regardless if it's mental, physical, or anything um, that's been in this business for a very, very long time. So it, it is unfortunate that fire providers go a lot of different ways. Good, some bad. And even police department officers do the same thing. Um, even um, EMS people, now, EMS would, folks. Now, with you guys, you know, being a firefighter, uh, I'm sure this is for you guys. This is not a a a nine to five, seven hour, uh, seven day a week type job. I mean, you guys actually uh, have like shifts that you guys would come in maybe three, four days, and then y'all off another four days to get that, to get that reset. Y'all actually live at the firehouse that, that you're assigned to. Am I correct? Yeah. Some of them are that way. Some there's, you got volunteers like in small communities. Then in the bigger cities, you've got firefighters actually stay at the firehouse. Um, 24 on 24 off that thing. So you, on the 24 hour shift, you're actually sitting at the firehouse and, uh, living there, eating there and all of that nature. Okay. And then you got the volunteers or they're, they're doing their daily life. Um, like driving truck or living in a small community. When the tone goes out, like you get a little pager, when that tone goes out, there's a fire call of some sort, either being medical or being a structure fire or grass fire or something of that nature, being in a small community. And then, the, of course, then you've got the big departments like Chicago, Detroit, you know, Lansing, um, Cleveland, Dayton, 
you know, they've got the big, big firehouses and all that. Okay. I mean, a lot of changes has been done in the fire service and EMS and police departments, how we have to handle different issues with this coronavirus thing. So there's a lot of different ways we have to handle it with, with that. So, All right. so but when you go 24 on, 24 off and stuff like that. So being that uh being being that you you was an engineer, the the fire truck driver, did you you had to have your your CDL in order to drive that or was you like grandfathered in or or what's what's the case with the fire engine? I, I was grandfathered in with a lot of that, but certain departments require CDL. You don't have to have a CDL drive a fire truck, but it does help because you, when you go through the fire service and drive an engineer, it's good to have schooling, regardless, you know, if you're a CDL holder or not. When you drive a fire truck, you have to be aware of your surroundings and everything else. You know, people get scared. They panic. Oh, oh there's fire. There's, you know, there's loud noises. You know, you got light coming out. Yeah, you got to be aware of your surroundings. You have to maneuver that truck. Um, some departments require you to have a CDL. Other departments do not require you to have a CDL. Because it's your grandfather, Dan, you're... you're um, even though you're an engineer driving that truck, but it does help that you got to have schooling. Okay, that's regardless. What's up. You're gonna have to have schooling to handle the piece. Of... That's what's up. And and I've been in the trucking industry, the trucking industry, and the fire service for over forty plus years. That's a, you know that's a lot okay, of that's a lot of that's a lot of years, bro. And congratulations, I you know I applaud you for for you know for the service and everything. Uh, you know, uh, before I switch gears, uh, the 9-11, of course, is coming up, uh, the anniversary of the, uh, of the attacks and, uh, and the towers and the Pentagon and what would have been. The, and that's also my wedding anniversary. <laughs> what would have been the White House. <laughs> uh, right. Well, the, the initial day of September, uh, September, nine eleven. Where, where were you, uh, and how did that affect you as a firefighter? Uh, when when the attacks happened. As far as me, as what I was doing, I was doing a volunteer, and I was actually working, driving a truck. There again. Um, it hurt. It really, really hurt. You know, it's never good when you see a fellow brother or sister in the in the fire service community, regardless, regardless of the area that you're in. That hurt a lot of us. Okay, it did. That hurt a lot of us in 9/11. Okay, just like the whole group. Um, I know you don't. But everybody knows the 9/11 and and everything else. And it, it's. It's unfortunate that my brothers and sisters passed away in that. With 9-11, when we lost brothers and sisters in that, it hurt every firefighter across the nation, regardless where you're at. Not only in this country, uh, across the seas, over in Europe. Them firefighters also, they, we all grieved. Every firefighter in this country grieved, and we lost brothers and sisters in that. Um, but we also look at it. They went in, they did their job. There's times that firefighters will lose their lives for doing their today's comment. Shout out goes out to Tony King. And he says, lockout, man. Canolio Freight is closing its doors in August 31st, 2022. Tony King. Thank you very much, brother, man, for the comment. I really do appreciate it. James, uh, man, listen, again, sir, I do appreciate you uh, coming on and uh, sharing, you know, sharing your story and everything. Um, uh, firefighter, trainer, 30 plus year truck driver. Uh, with all it, with, 
it's it's it seems it sounds as though you know with all these accolades that you have, sir. Uh, let's 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 fast forward to uh to what happened. I mean, in the I, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, because see over here, I I I, I tend not to sugarcoat everything. I I give you guys my platform to. You know, to tell your story, it's, you know, vent, rant, rave, all that good stuff. But, you know, prior to knowing you, because I got a little bit more respect for you now, you know, when you give a person that chance to get to know a person, then you will get to see a little bit into their psyche. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I yeah. appreciate you giving me that opportunity to... Uh, to to get that instead of me just f outright forming an op opinion of you, you know what I'm saying. Right. So, uh, let's start before uh, before Junior showed up. Um, you 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 parked in a parking spot. Looked like you did you had a did you have a co driver with you or was that somebody a rider with you or something? That was actually my wife. Okay. So you and your wife pulls up. Y'all pull up in the pilot. Y'all park. Nobody on the side of you. You you and your right. wife is, you know, probably conversating Fighting. and everything. And <laughs> yeah. and then, you know, what what was going on before Junior pulled up? Well, what was going on is I want to say some time had passed. Okay. My wife was outside with our, our puppy dog. I, I got a phone call from, uh, from a friend of mine that saying, uh, our fire chief passed away. All right. In my, one of my local firefighter areas, okay. um, that I used to belong to. He passed away. Okay. When my wife come back in, we started fighting again, arguing. That's when she says, I want a divorce. All right. This is all happening prior to junior showing up. I'm like, okay. You know, my emotions were already gone. You know, everything was gone. And then when junior showed up and then the, the loud reaper, the loud reapers, and everything else. I kind of like just snapped. I had, you know, every, all, everything combined, boiled, boiled up to the situation. And when that come in, I kind of like lost it. You know, I lost my cool, lost my temper. It was on, you know, I lost all, all of it combined with. Everything that happened, I apologize. You know, I I snapped, and it was unprofessional of me for one. You, you know, it, you, you I, know. Let me let me hold you up right there. You know, I. You know, I, 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 I kind of feel you where you at, especially you know with the divorce part because I'm I'm a divorce. I you know, uh, me and my wife. Just uh, finally got around to uh, getting the paperwork we in, but we've been, you know, we've been separated for over seven years, and I, I can tell you the emotions <laughs> of uh, of that. So I can I could probably understand the 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 commotion that was going on between you and her in the truck. But before you right. got in the truck, I mean, she did she she just outright said she wanted divorce in the truck or. Did you knew that it was it, it was coming when when you brought her out there with you in the truck? No, it, it just um, we've been together for well, we've been married for six years. Mm -hmm. We've been together for seven, um, and we've been in a truck nonstop pretty much, except for maybe one year that that we actually come off the road, try to make a local thing, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so we, so we, uh, been together in, in the truck for, I want to say roughly six years, seven, seven, I ballpark, you know, a very long time. Well, we can say that. And 
when you argue, you're not going hardly anywhere. Right. You know, you got maybe right. half a step. You're right. You That's, know, yeah. Or go I, outside I and cool off. Or, right. You know, so it's been boiling up, boiling up, and she does not talk when she when she gets mad. She don't say anything. She don't talk. She don't. She kind of like blocks everything out. Right. So I try to talk to her. Try to talk to her, and then you know, kind of blow up. And we kind of blew up at each other and and stuff. We both said stuff that regretted. And that's when after that, not too long that that's when uh, Junior uh, showed up. Now you noticing. You know, outside, you know, you just, I, you know, I'm assuming you just have to look up or, you know, you noticing outside while you're conversating with your, with your wife, you seeing, right. you, you seeing this prime, <laughs> this prime <laughs> is, is, is setting up the pull up in the side, on, on the side of you. And you just, yeah. happen, you just happen to look up and I guess you got animated, which, you know, kind of made Junior come your way. Because I'm assuming Junior right. was outside guiding his trainee into the spot, and he just caught wind of of you, uh, you know, kind of kind of complaining and arguing with my wife, right? And, so and Junior, then, then he's come in, and, right? Junior comes yep. up, Junior comes up to you, uh, comes up to you, and go ahead and it's you know we already seen in the video what you know what was said, but. Did right. you? Uh, let me ask you a question. Did you, you know, because this this is 2022 now. I mean, there's camera cultures right. everywhere. I mean, you you you, it, you can't you you can't go nowhere without somebody having a camera. Did, yeah, that's uh, you true. know, I you know, I I I know you snapped and everything, but did you? Stop for a millisecond to say, shit, he has a camera. Maybe I should pull myself back a little bit. I be honest with you, sir, no, I didn't. I, I, I just I, I I wasn't even thinking at all, period. I let all my emotions out, every bit of them. And I yep. just went off on Junior and I apologized to the man. Mm -hmm. It was unprofessional of me i should have known better okay mm -hmm. i should have and i and i know better than that and i feel guilty i'm ashamed of myself you know i bring this onto myself right. and, and i'm ashamed of myself was what i've done you know i apologize to the man i apologize to all my brothers and sisters in the trucking community hopefully they'll forgive me for this i mean we'll all have a bad day regardless what profession you're in, you're going, you're going to have a bad day, right? Regardless, and I, you know what, that I, day was. I always say that people don't know what people, especially truckers, we they, the people don't right. know what we be going through. I mean, our our mind, our minds is wired differently. <laughs> Pretty much so, yeah. Especially when you get cars cutting you off and this and that, stopping mm -hmm. you in front of you, but you only got fifty feet to stop, and it's mm -hmm. like, okay. Where am I going to go? You know, you got a millisecond to make a choice. The guys that actually rear end people, you know, or vice versa, or, or run them off the road or row their trucks, they're thinking about other things. They're not focusing on the job uh, mm -hmm. at hand. They're not can, They're not driving the truck. You know, they're just sitting here being a steamboat holder. Well, anybody can do that. Even cars are steamboat holders, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, they might have a fight with their kids. There's like, they're worried about the, getting their kids to football practice or soccer practice or baseball practice or, or, or whatever. Or, or my boyfriend is doing this. My girlfriend's doing that or blah, blah, blah. They're not focusing on that. As us professionals, we have to do that. And when they when they have, have accidents and all that, they're not focusing on the job. Their their mind is elsewhere. We have to focus on the job. We've got an eighty thousand pound kill machine, right, out there on the highway. I've seen what these trucks can do to cars. I've been there. I've been on the cleanup crew of that. All right. I 
sorry, sir. I'm some no, of the no, things take your time. that take I've seen time. in the fire service. Take your time. Um, in the fire service is that's why I'm mean, I'm going through so much emotions because our puppy was a service animal. It was took care of him of her depression and all that. It's also take care of me as my uh, of my. Uh, Post the, whatever that technical name is. I'm sorry, I'm not good on the acronym. Right, right. Um, PDS, PD, PDSD. Yeah, PDSD. Yes, PDSD. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but he was he was also my support animal. Also, so everything boils down to what when I see accidents, when I see trucks hit rear-ending uh, cars or whatever the case may be. I've seen it happen. I've been on receiving it. Um, I've seen little kids in, in small cars where a truck is run over the top of them, all right, over the car. And now you got a whole family here that, that guys like me got to come up with medical, uh, a better term to say, and it's probably wrong for me to say, but uh, to give you an idea, it's come up with the EMS, fire department, Police department spatula, mm. so to speak. We're picking it up off the highway. Exactly, and we go and, you know, and we see. You know, I, I, I see issues like that every day, and it's it's it's, yes. it's crazy. And I can understand, you know, all that, you know, all that along with the with the personal, uh, with the personal uh, issues that's going on and. You know, you and then you again, like I said, you see this prime truck reefer loud and and all like that getting ready to pull up on the side of you. And you like <sighs> so you, you know, after 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 going off on junior um, after, you know, after going off on junior and everything, um, you kind of like pointed out like different places where, you know, junior could could park at you know try to be like you know why not just give me some peace and you know peace and quiet yada 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 and i guess right. you know and i guess junior you know being junior you know and i'm saying he's like well i'm already set yeah. up i'm i'm already set up the park we 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 parking right here um right you but in the same token of, of the of the man also mm -hmm. yeah i pointed out different spots and they were all reefers okay mm -hmm. they're all reefer sections however you know, you get yeah. The guy next to me, his people were shut off, and he clearly states that. I mean, he clearly shows that. But the thing of it is, um, it was wrong for me, unprofessional me to show up. But you know, there are also drivers out here. There's a lot of drivers here. I'm not. I mean, they have common courtesy. For, okay, you see, you see a bunch of parking spots next to Reefer, then you see a bunch of parking spots. I'm not saying nobody can't park anywhere. I mean, I know, I mm -hmm. get it. You know, I that was for me. You, that your, was your point. I'm, well, I mean, it was unprofessional, yes, but your point was that give us a little bit of courtesy, considering the fact that you have to leave your Reefer on, but you're you're in an area where there isn't no Reefers here but there's reefers that are on in the other area of the parking lot that you can that you can park at but right. the you know the adrenaline is pumping from the both of y'all one is staying one is staying yeah. face and the other one is like again i accept your apology as a truck driver you know what i'm saying because now i got a better understanding of what was going on prior to what what went on in the video because when you right. see the video, you only see one part of the incident. But the other part of the right. incident that I want to touch on is today's comment shout out goes out to Tony King. And he says, lockout, man. Canolio Freight is closing its doors in August 31st, 2022. Tony King, thank you very much, brother man, for the comment. I really do appreciate it. You kind of put your company vehicle at risk. What was your thought? You're right. I did. What was your that, thought that process I, on that? That basically with what I did there, um, I was thinking, okay, my friend is gone. I'm going to go join him. Okay. Basically, what I guess that my 
thought process it gives with that point of it. You know, it's like that was wrong for me. But however, you know, you know how you when you lose your best friend in the whole wide world, right? A, a person that that is is been um on your side that has saved your life and you saved his life. When you lose that person, your your emotions and it's like you get to Montana. I don't care if I live or not, die or not, you know, type thing. And I guess for me, I, I, that's what I did with the door thing, you know. And that's not right for anybody. All right, that is not right. I mean, regardless, you know, like I said, that was unprofessional of me, and I should have known better. And I feel I'm ashamed of myself for what I've done. All right, I am um, on that. But in the same token, you're gonna get drivers like that. I mean, right. okay, I, yeah, I opened the door, but okay, the man is training. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna let him hit the door. Don't get me wrong, I am not gonna do that. But since he's training, all right, you take a trainee that he can back in a spot like that, that's that tight in a truck stop. All right, let's say he goes. There's there's receivers and shippers out here are that tight. You're not gonna have that much room. He had a lot of room. Don't get me wrong, he he did, but. You're going to get some tight, 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 tight super spots. If you can back it in there, you know, as a trainer myself, okay, if you can back it in a tight spot, that makes you a better driver to get it into some tight spots. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I, he, I don't know if that makes sense. You yeah, know? He, but yeah, Junior, Junior is definitely Prime's uh, super trainer. I mean, he's been, he's been, he's been rocking – He's been rocking trainees for for forever over at Prime, and he's one of he's one of Prime's top uh, top trainees. So when I, when I, I notice when know, I, I mean, when I notice him getting in the truck and actually, you know, back that bad boy up, even with your door still open, that that right, that was right. like that was miraculous for me. I, I was like, wow. That right there is is what I'm trying to explain. You know, that right there, right. He is, he knows how to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, for me, for when I train, uh, I'm ha- I, I, may, I am hard when I train when it comes to backing in. I make I make that even tighter. Basically, what I do, and if they, you know, if they can get it in there or something like that, and even drivers, because some drivers don't park straight. All right, they're on an angle, this and that. And then you still got to try to get it in there. All right, I make it tough. When I trained my wife, okay, I made her blindside. I made her blindside into a truck stop mm-hmm. in a parking spot. Mm-hmm. All right. I tell you what, she can't side side. I mean, she's getting better at it, but don't get me wrong. But she can blindside like there ain't no tomorrow. Say like nobody's business, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but uh, me opening the door and all that, that was a total ass on my part, and I'm very sorry for that. And I shouldn't have done that. There's a lot of – this whole situation, I could have handled a lot differently, a lot. I, I look back at it. I've seen the video itself and all that. That's okay. I looked at this whole situation. I looked at the video. You know what? You stupid dumbass. You you, you can – excuse my language. I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, I would uh, – would say that you can hand, you should have handled this a whole lot differently, a whole lot differently. I mean, let the man back in. Then I could just moved and nothing would have been said, nothing or that, vice versa, and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, looking back, you know, when that the, when the accident, when things happen at that time, then after you take a breather, look back at it. Well, the damage is already done. Right. And then you go back, we could have did this, could have that, should have, would have, could have, so to speak. You know, I'm, there's nothing I can do. I can't go back in time and take it back of the whole incident. If I could, I would. But, you know, but if anybody could go back in time and restart over, you know, that'd be a miracle. Gotcha. You know, I mean, there's a land of miracles, but we could just move forward on this. Uh, And Junior is a professional. I can mend him on every step of the way. And so, you know, prime example, when he backed it in there, even when my dumbass had the, the door open, he still backed it in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. That truths that you've been taught on the very tight, tight super spots. 
like and some of these drivers out here need to be taught then super tight spots like that you know on the back of it because i'm not I, please don't don't take this the wrong way i mean no, prime don't. does not have a good track record on on the most safe you know <laughs> driving down no the highway. listen listen i listen i i i hear you i mean you know prime swift believe me i I, I hear it every day. Prime, Swift, Snyder, all of them. You know, they they may or may not have good track records, but uh, Western Express. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, James, man, you know, uh, I know you pulled off after that. Uh, you know, after that situation, but <laughs> unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the video kind of reached back to your your company and at that time yeah. um at that time it was uh you know again like you said you you your thought process wasn't on the fact that you was being recorded and everything and i'm sure when you left up out of there you didn't think any uh any you know setbacks was going to occur but unfortunately right. the the video reached the the company um of course i you know i i do to make the call video so i made the call to you to the company to you know to talk about um uh, to talk about what kind of drivers that they want for their company and everything and all like that you know the recruiters and all like that we didn't talk about you you know we did we only had like a two second conversation about you because of course the company can't go into detail about you know about the the right. employee and all like that um but after that conversation um again i saw you come on the asian mm -hmm. my show and that's when i was like i reached back out to your company and i said hey i said if you can uh forward my information to uh mr sanders i i would definitely like to give you know give him my platform so he can you know so he can as you know express his story and everything so shout out to uh, Luther Logistics for making that happen for us. But Luther Logistics is they, a great company to work for. It is. They got they got the they they got the they got the video. I'm sure they wasn't happy about it. Yep. You you care to talk about what happened between you and them, or is that like uh, under wraps that you can't talk about it? Oh, I, I, I can talk about it. It's, it's fine. I mean, I get where they're coming from. I did put their company at risk, and that was my fault. Luther Logistics is the best company. I mean, they are a great company to work for. The management team is understanding, and they understand, and they're a great bunch of people. You couldn't ask for a better company. I, you can't. All right? I'm the one that screwed up, not them. It's don't flip. Nobody in that company is is what what happened to the video i put everybody at risk and i put a, i slapped luther logistics in the face and i am very sorry for that i am i'm yeah i would love to go back to work there but i get it i understand that's not what i'm saying i'm not i mean i love the company very much so they are a great bunch of people over there. Great equipment, great people to work for. the The owners are great to work for. They're you know they're understanding. They're they're. I have utmost respect for Luther Logistics, and anybody should be proud to go to work there. Um, they are. I am very sorry, unprofessional, what I've done, and. With all due respect, I'm trying not to cry. I apologize for that. No, you, you know, you good. take your time. I'm, take your time, James. Take your time. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm very emotional and I'm very ashamed of myself of what I'd done to Luther. Luther is a great bunch of people, right from the the payroll department to to the billing, the the dispatchers, the the operations, recruiting, the mechanics, everything. You know, they're a great bunch of people. Um. You know, I would I would recommend anybody. I mean, just because I did a dumb move doesn't mean, you know, they're not going to be that way. I mean, they will work with you. They are. I have so much respect for them. It's not even funny. Okay. And 
I, I'm very sorry that this happened. Yeah, I did get terminated, but I get that. I know they had to do what they had to do. Right. You know, I mean, I was kind of hoping they give me probation, but they didn't. Okay. But it is what it is. They just, you know, want to separate everything right now. You know, type type of all that. So we, you know, we would like to. I would like to foremost apologize to Jordan Luther. Um, every step of the way, I would like to apologize to everybody, the entire Luther Luther family. I would like to apologize to them. They said that. Um... They say that James is a great guy. We really enjoyed having him here. It's unfortunate what happened, but however, in the best interest of safety of himself and other motorists on the road, he unfortunately has to be taken from behind the wheel. Uh, they said they understand that emotional trauma can dramatically co uh, compromise a person's judgment and can create impulsive behavior. But with that said, they said that you was a great guy, you was an awesome employee, and they said uh, hopefully in the future, you know, once you get your, you know, get your your situation taken care of, they might be able to do something with you in the future to allow you to come back on right. board. So shout out to I, I shout out to Luther Logistics uh, for that, and shout out to you, James, for you know not being one of them type of employees to turn around and be like, oh well, this company is garbage, and they you know they should have just did this, and you they should have did that. You you went in there. You took it on the chin, you stood 10 toes down, and you understood what uh, what what needed to be done. James, man, mm, uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully you'll take this time to to get yourself together. Yes, sir. Also, I want to let you you and your listeners know, um, and if you can shout out to Luther, also, I mean, a shout out, and I don't know if I imagine they're listening and you know, all that. I have rolled in anger management courses. I've also uh, have seen a a doctor uh, about all this. Because, um, with all due respect, sir, I have lost my entire family my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, all at a young age. Okay. So I, with all that still, lingering over me and then losing friends along the way i have snapped yes and it's just more that i can bear so yes i am seeing a doctor as long as the benefits hold out i can only do so much when i'm not working um until the benefits come in until they run out so i have rolled um i have already gone the group therapy and so um, the people that know me that know that, hey, he's already changed with with my attitude and and with everything that's going on and in all that. Um, yeah, I am shameful what I've done to Luther and the whole and junior or Mr. Hernandez and his trainee. I never got his uh, trainee's name that I'm very sorry for all. I know he's he's trainee. Um, and then I want to apologize for that also. I uh, to him and the junior both. But I have uh, taking steps to get better. Um, so and and that's what I'm doing. I, I'm. I needed to pull myself off the road regardless. Um, right. I've been living in a, a semi truck for since 2000. All right. I've stayed before me and my wife got to uh, stay a couple of different friends and all that. But for the most part, I've been living in the truck and I'm tired of living in a truck. And I was going to snap. I was going to, I was going to go in and talk to the Luther guys in a way before all this happened, before I blew up, lost my cool, being an unprofessional driver. 
unprofessional man, basically. Um, it's a better better name that I can actually describe it. I mean, some people disagree with unprofessional man, but a lot of them would say that. And I and I admit I, I've done wrong, and I want to apologize. I'm the type of guy. Hey, it's like my dad always taught me: if you, if you did wrong, stand up, admit it. And I did wrong, and I'm standing up to admit it. Accountability, accountability. goes a long way. And accountability, yep. and, 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 and accountability, accountability gets you that respect. You know, I respect my brothers and sisters out here, um, out here on the road of truck drivers and all that. Some of them need a lot more training. Some of them, some drivers out here, you just cannot help because there is a language barrier. We all know this, um, but some of the drivers out here should be, you know, try to give them training, but they won't listen. But, you know, you can only help somebody to a certain point. Well, there's no return. You know what? I tell you what, James, we're we going to stop right there on that note because that, that could be a whole new topic. And being that you got 30 years plus in the game, I'm sure you got a uh, got a whole lot of got a whole lot of uh, advice for some of these young Thundercats out here, man. So I tell you what. We're gonna we're gonna put a pause on this one. We're gonna uh we're gonna come back together. Maybe let's uh let's pin this for maybe like uh you know six months down the line, you know, to see where you at, what type of headspace, uh where you at and all like that, and we'll we'll get into another awesome conversation, man. Today's comment shout out goes out to Tony King. And he says, lockout, man. Canolio Freight is closing its doors in August 31st, 2022. Tony King, thank you very much, brother man, for the comment. I really do appreciate it. If you do, there's one thing I like to say to the new drivers out here, and even some of the guys that's been out here 20 years, a couple of different words of advice. Don't do what I did. Don't blow up. All right. Cool, calm, and collected. Try to get your composure. All right. It's not worth, you know, that could went a lot of different ways. All right. Just take a breather and just calm down and all that. You know, step back, look at the situation. I did, unfortunately, I did not do that. All right. I took it all a whole different way and a bad way. You know, let's learn from this. Yep. And I admit it, and I am very, very sorry of my actions. It was an unprofessional act. I want to apologize, like I said, to all you, you and to all your listeners on your on your station, your YouTube channel um, type thing. And on that note, I, there again, I want to leave it at that. I want to just apologize and, and let that uh, go. However, the new drivers and some of the old drivers, I want to give you, if you have a hard time backing, in a truck stop, regardless, get yourself a toy truck, okay, some type of, uh, of truck. Go to the truck stop, get yourself a toy truck, either get on the floor or by yourself. Take the little toy truck and practice on a, t on a table, but maybe a couple cups up, coffee cup in between. You know, make it shorter, back it with that little toy truck. Remember what you did with that toy truck, apply it to your big truck, and you get it in every time. There you go, all the time. Yo, guys, the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Thank you very much. If you guys want to get on, y'all know what to do. 216 2090 That's how y'all can get in connection with the Lockout Men. James, thank you very much, sir, for coming on to the show. Awesome conversation, thank you. bro. Awesome conversation. Thank you, sir. All right, until next time, y'all stay tuned for the next Lockout Man podcast. Feel there's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water. In the, the water. In the water.